coming to you. Repeat after me. It's okay if it doesn't happen, God. It's okay if it doesn't happen and feel what comes up. Feel the feeling that comes without labeling it, without giving it a story, without judging it, without trying to change it. That's a blind spot. That's resistance. But that's good. You're bringing it into the light, inviting it into the light. This is what you hadn't let go of because you couldn't see it. You were feeling it, but now you see it. It's okay even if it doesn't happen, God. I don't need that. All I need is you. And I know that doesn't feel true yet, but that's good. Feel what you do feel without modifying it. Just look at it. Stare it in the face. Don't break eye contact with that feeling. Give it your full attention like you would if you were standing in conversation with someone listening to them and you wanted them to know you were listening. Don't even blink. Just stare straight ahead, but it's like you're staring straight in, straight back. You could even nod your head a little bit in understanding and agreement. Every time that thought comes back, how am I going to make this happen? Or even more holy, God, how are you going to make this happen? How is it going to come true? Sit back. Physically. Really, sit back off the edge of that seat. Relax your stomach, relax your jaw, and chill. Like you're already out of the situation. Like there is no situation to be out of. Sit back into yourself, into that relaxation that's already there, that stillness that is the Christ, waiting for you to sit back into him, back into his truth. That there's nothing here but love, but freedom. That thought would come so frequently in 2018 when I felt stuck in St. Louis. Truth would come often, but not often enough. And every time that thought came, how am I going to get out of here? It's almost as if I'd stop that thought mid-thought and sit back and breathe. Only love is here. There's nowhere to go. Nowhere else I could be. Nothing to figure out nothing to get out of, nothing to get into. Only love is here. And that was my ladder, rung by rung, moment by moment. Only love is here. Exhaling. Not because it will happen, but because even if it doesn't happen, I'll be okay. I'll be good. God will still be here. God is here no matter what is happening, no matter what you're seeing, no matter what you're feeling. Even when that resistance is there, notice that what notices the resistance is not resisting anything. The resistance is allowed fully. You're allowing the resistance. And like Adi Ashanti says, the paradox is that when resistance is fully accepted, like it is being right now, the resistance disappears. That last block of ice melts. And now there's just this flow of light. Jesus is saying, close your eyes and let yourself be carried away on the flowing current of my grace. Close your eyes and do not think of the present, turning your thoughts away from the future just as you would from temptation. Repose in me, believing in my goodness. And I promise you by my love that if you say you take care of it, I will take care of it all. I will console you liberate you, and guide you. And now we pray ten times, O Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. O Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. And I want you to pray as if you're hearing, feeling, I love you, I love you, I love you. As you say these words, you're praying, I surrender myself to you, but you're feeling, I love you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. 
Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. And now our concluding prayer, Mother, I am yours now and forever. Through you and with you, I want to belong completely to Jesus. Amen. When you say, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, when you say, I surrender myself to you, you're saying, It's okay if it doesn't happen. I'll be okay if it doesn't happen, if what you want to happen happens and it's not in alignment with what I want. I surrender to that. There's power in that. Remember, Ramdas says the most exquisite paradox, as soon as you give it all up, you can have it all. As long as you want power, you can't have it. The minute you don't want power, you'll have more than you ever dreamed possible. How do you stop wanting what you are praying for? You can't just stop thinking about it. My son said just last night, talking about death again, oh, I can't stop thinking about it because the more I try not to think about it, I think about it. Nisargadatta Maharaj says you concentrate, you meditate, you torture your mind and body, you do all sorts of unnecessary things, but you miss the essential, which is the elimination of the person. Absolute freedom requires an extraordinary sacrifice, a sacrifice that very few are willing to make. That is why the greatest possible happiness is so rare among humans. The sacrifice is your own individuality, the personal I. However, it only appears as a sacrifice until one realizes that such an identity is an illusion anyway. There is no separation, and accordingly, there is no personal self. This realization itself is the liberation. That's why Jesus says, I and my father are one. I am my father. You are your mother. You must be her apparition in this world. You must be the appearance of Jesus in this world. In those clothes, with that skin color, with that hair type, with those eyes. I made eye contact just yesterday with someone who was weeping, crying across the street from me. I was walking back to my car after getting my nails done. She was on a park bench crying audibly, and our eyes locked. And before I could think, the words, I love you, came out loud enough for her to hear over the street traffic that separated us. And she yelled back, thank you. And I said, I'm sorry, and it'll be okay. And I'd never broke stride. My feet didn't stop moving. A thought came that I should stop and walk over to her, talk to her. But that part of me that spoke, I love you, without a thought also kept walking. And when I looked back, she was already gone. We have to be obedient. We don't get to manipulate. We don't get to judge. We don't get to decide how the situation should look, how it should play out. Nikki wanted to know more about what was going on to see if she could help. God knew what was going on. The help was given. The answer there has been given. God heard you. That prayer you've been praying, God heard you. Now the question is, do you hear him? When I hear him, everything in me melts. Me melts. And I become all hearing again. I know you're ready for what you want. I know you've been waiting for a long time. But are you loving? Are you practicing his presence? Have you recognized that it is all that's here? And that no matter if that thing comes or if it doesn't, you'll still feel this. You'll still be this beyond the excitement and the disappointment, the getting it and the not getting it. But I need you to hear me that if you stay as this, there's a great chance that what you want is in alignment with what he wants and you will see it or something better. Play around with that statement, that prayer to God today that it's okay if I don't get it. And keep letting go more and more of that resistance that was in the blind spot, that whole body, that whole mind, the ego, 
all of you that you think you are is a blind spot and you can't let it go. You can just see it. Knowing it's there is enough. Knowing it's not you is enough. And it thins out. It becomes more and more transparent, easier and easier to see through. The world can see through you to him. And that's why they're attracted to you more and more. That's why you'll find yourself in situations more and more where you are someone's answered prayer. And you'll also find in those situations that you don't go rogue. You don't go back into ego, back into personality, back into trying to give what you think someone needs. God knows what is needed. Be empty of yourself so you can be full of him. Thank you, thank you, thank you for continuing to support this show and Wake Up to Love, my new book, Love's new book. I hope if you're in the Clearwater Beach area that you'll come out this weekend to our free meditation meetup. We'll pray together, we'll meditate together. I have rosaries to give out, hugs to give out. You got that last little bit of resistance out. Today is a good day, the best day you've had in a long time. And I'm proud of you. And I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And we'll chat soon. If this episode helped you feel good, helped you feel God, then leave a review on Apple Podcasts and screenshot it and send it to me for a free gift. And follow me on Patreon so I can see you, so I can see your smile.